Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Today, going to be doing a draft where the jersey number of the players has to increase every single pick. So basically, I want to start as low as possible and try not to make huge jumps in the numbers because that way I could run out and therefore just ruin the draft basically because i can't do it anymore it's also going to be tricky though because who knows maybe i'll only get up to 40 and then i miss out on a whole bunch of players that i could have otherwise taken believe it or not i do not know what jersey number everybody wears shocker so i'm gonna go based off the jersey number that is on the inspect player thing you know what i'm talking about when you bring up all their stats and whatnot that and once again i forgot to go to play now so we're gonna randomize the team here i will look up at you guys and i will be stopping to choose our team now we get the golden knights all right this is the be a pro squad don't even think about touching my lines jabroni yep gonna keep oh that's another challenge the salary cap i didn't even think of that we get pick number 10 okay so that's i don't know if that's good or not obviously i'm not gonna take kane or headman who i believe both are 88 right Oh no, he's 77. I knew they were both two of the same number, but for some reason, actually, yeah, now that I think about it, Hedman's definitely not 88. Let's just take Kaprizov, call it a day. Number 97, that gives us two possibilities. No, one possibility left because it can't be a number 99. I'm pretty much stuck between Ovechkin and Panarin, number eight and number 10, because if I take Ovi, I could take a number nine and also a number 10, but number 10 is also not a terrible starting spot. You know what? Even though Ovi is my boy, I'm going to go with the bread man this time. 11.6. He is six years younger. Same overall. Hopefully he buries the puck for us as well. Ooh, Kopitar would be going up one number to number 11. That's actually very, very tempting. 10 million is a little steep, but it doesn't matter too much, I guess. We'll try to budget later if we even can. JT Miller, number nine. Taves, number seven. Oh no. Okay, yeah, so... I think that's probably going to be our best bet is going with Copastar for now. I'm trying to think if there's any goalies that wear weird numbers in the tens, but I don't think so. Not off the top of my head, and I don't know a lot of goalie numbers anyway, so I don't think that that would help. For the most part, it's 30s and 40s, so we're going to be waiting for a goalie, which is terrifying. We could take Pavelski, who is number 16, and then we have our first line with a center left wing and right wing that should get a plus five with all of the X-Factors and abilities. I really have to take a defenseman soon, though. I Yeah, okay. Welcome to the team, Captain. This guy's so good at hockey, it's actually outrageous. Man, we could take Brian Rust. That's going up one number to number 17. It's another forward, though. I don't know if we really have a better option, so I'm just gonna take him. Not that I'm upset about taking Brian Rust, all right? He's a very solid hockey player. I'm just saying that we do need some defensemen here eventually. We're kind of doing the front-to-back draft at this point. Philip also wears 17, so that is unfortunate. I actually would have maybe taken him over Rust had I known that. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna take a bit of a jump here. Go from 17 to number 22 with Brett Pesci. Only 4 million at 86 overall. That's solid. Oh, that's prime. Essa Lindell. Number 23, we're going up one and on top of that, he's also left-handed. So that's going to be our first defensive pair. That worked out much better than I thought it would. Let's go! 29's not that big of a jump, but it's still pretty significant in the grand scheme of things. For an 87 overall goalie making 3.5 though, I think it might be worth it. All right, Mark, let's get it done here. Is there any weird players that just wear number 30 or something? Number 31? Or am I better off just taking another goalie? Okay, if he's still here next round, I'm taking... Laurel Gord. I don't know if you guys remember that Yanni Laurel thing, but anyway, I make that reference all the time. All right, so Rant is number 32, and he is making 2 million at 84. So we're gonna have two very good goalies, and then hopefully Gord is still there, but this is... I think... No, that wasn't our big gap, so he could still be here. No way. All right, number 37, Yanni Gord will be joining the team. This is pick number 10, meaning after this pick, we are halfway through the draft. And the fact that we're only at pick 37 right now, I feel like we're in pretty good shape. We do only have $29 million of cap space left, which I might have to sort of just not abide by that this time. I will try though. I really will. And on that note, Hartman, 1.7. Oh yeah. And... Yeah, Yanni Gore was 37, so that works out perfectly. 38. Thank you, Hartman. We are officially entering the 40s. Number 42, Gustav Forsling. 82 overall, making 2.6. That is not too shabby. So, that is our third defenseman. Our defense, of course, not looking terrible. Joel Edmondson, number 44. That's not a big jump. Another defenseman, so he could be paired... 
Yeah, that could work. I don't know about the handedness, but I don't think we can be too picky. So welcome to the team, Joel. We now need to pick higher than number 44, which used to be a number of mine a long time ago. And Ilya Labushkin at 81 overall wears number 46. 2.7 isn't bad at all. We only have one left winger at the moment. We do have three right wingers though. So one of them could just play on the left side. So basically... After this pick, we just need one more defenseman and our bottom six. You know what? Just going to get defenseman out of the way and jump all the way up to 58. That's right. David Savard, you are joining the team. He is a right-handed defenseman, so hopefully that works out. I know that our third and fourth defensemen were both left-handed, Forsling and... What's his name? Joel. There we go. So we need a 59, which definitely not a common jersey number. Or we're entering the 60s, and we need all of our bottom six basically to be in the 60s. Dadnov wouldn't be bad, but 5 million... Can't make that happen. We could be in trouble here. 64, David Camp, welcome to the roster. Yeah, that's a pretty big jump, but nothing super large. Number 68, Mike Hoffman, I guess. 4.5 is steep. Oh no, I don't know if we can do that. We might have to though, if I want our team to be competitive. We do have a good roster, but... Okay, fine, I'll do it. It is another fairly large jump, but I'm gonna go with Frankie Boy, who is 81 overall, 3.6. Yeah, that cap is... Cutting it close, but we're almost done. I need to fit three more forwards into six mil. It's possible. Number 83, it's kind of a random number, but it's not that big of a step up. So I feel like this is probably one of the better players we're going to find without making a massive jump. All right, Matt, you are now a golden knight. Number 89, Sam Gagne. How many picks do we have left? Oh, we only have one left after him. Okay, so I'm going to take Sam Gagne. And then I have an idea for our last pick if they're still here. All right, sick. Literally both players I was considering are gone. So we don't have either of them to pick from. Tyler Johnson is number 90, but that would put us over the cap. So I'm going to veto that. Tomas Tata is also number 90, but would put us over the cap again. So no, Ryan Lomberg. Number 94, he is a left winger, which we do need. 78 overall, not bad. All right, Ryan. And on that note, our draft is complete. So let's sim the entire draft, have a look at all the players that we took and see if we even stand a chance. I am kind of excited to see what they look like in the edit line screen. There you have it. We ended up picking up Eric Chalgren right after Lomberg. So we do have another goalie there. So we pretty much managed to go all the way from number 10 to number 94. Meaning also that no one's number should clash and everyone should get their number. The game is kind of doing a madness here by putting Kopitar on the second line, but that gives this line a plus one and this line still has a plus five. So I think I'm gonna leave it for now. I tried moving Russ down and it just did not give the plus one. See if I do this and that. Oh wait, hold on. It still does. Never mind. All right, that's where we're wrong and then screw you computer considering we have roll three lines i'm gonna move hartman up one and move vetrano down to the fourth line sorry frank so this is what our offense looks like we got a first line of breadman copastar and captain america and then we've got rust gord and hoffman so our top six pretty solid overall bottom six i think they can get the job done we've got some grit there and some two-way forwards yeah defensively no line chemistry but that's better than negative so i will take that pesci and lindell on the first pair and then we've got savard edmondson forsling playing with oh we actually do have the correct amount of right-handed left-handed defenseman nice in net we have the legend himself flower backed up by ranta i think we have a pretty good team here how good though? I'll say that we make the playoffs with 45 wins and that the bread man gets the most points with 81. He's going to be just shy of point a game. Let's simulate. We've had an incredible start so far, which worries me greatly. We're either going to crash back down to earth or this team is way better than I thought it was. All of this for a first round exit. It would have to be a pretty dramatic fall from grace for us to lose it here. So although we are on, what is that now? A six game, five game losing streak, six game losing streak. Why did I say anything? There we go. We finally take a dub. We were just doing so good to the point that the game had to nerf us. We're back on the winning train now. 38, 39 wins. I don't know if it showed that last game. Going into the deadline. 39. Very cool. Let's enter the deadline just to see who's available. What teams are willing to give up here? Seth Jones, 86 overall. No, no, I don't think so. I know I did mark us as a seller, but absolutely not. Also, why does it show your own players on here? I guess, yeah, it kind of makes sense, but I don't want to see my... I'm not trying to trade for a player I already have. You know what I'm saying? Let's hope we can keep this momentum up into the latter half of the season. Jones headed to Edmonton and anything else? Nope. Looks like there was only one big trade. 
but Will Sullivan does get canned from the Hurricanes. My original prediction of 45 wins is definitely going to be incorrect unless we keep up this pace. Like, holy crap, dude. Why does the game do this? I want to know how many losses we just took in a row. It's actually outrageous. So never mind. 45 could be correct here if we lose. Nice. Nailed it. So there's one, four games in a row, five, six, seven losses in a row. <laughs> this game is a joke. We finished the season two, seven, and one. Love to see that. After leading the division for most of the year, we ended up finishing fourth in the Pacific because of that tragic season ending. The post-trade deadline collapse is real, baby. The Seattle Kraken are your president's trophy winners. They had Vrana, Stamkos, and Line on the first line. Very good. Jarvis, Horvat, Rasmussen. Okay. They do have a very good team. Cal and Nett backed up by Stewie, Roman Yossi, and Boakfist. I don't know if that's a president's trophy winning team, but anyway. The 19th placed Montreal Canadiens qualify for the playoffs here. Breadman had 84 points, and we also see point a game from Joseph, who puts up 82. Kopitar had 78. Hoffman, 59. Very cool. Rust had 56. Gord, 53. Also, shout out Hartman, who had 43 points on the third line. Great performance from our attendees. Flower had 34 wins, 5 shutouts, and a 919. Ranta had 11 wins, and only one shutout. That's okay, though, considering he played 19 games. A 915 as well to boot. Forsling led us for points defensively with 24. Did not see a lot of offensive production from our defense, but okay. I'm fine with that, as long as you guys shut it down. Gibson and Cal both had 42 wins, but Cal did it in 65 games. Gibson took 76. That's a lot of starts. He also had a 901, and Cal had a 918. That's pretty solid. Number 88 himself, Victor Hedman, led defenseman. He had 78 points and a nice amount of assists. Roman Yossi had 77 points. Fox had 71. We had a few players break the 100 mark this year. Dreisaitl puts up 110. We get 107 from Matthews and 102 from Kucherov. Very close in the Rocket Richard race there, but Matthews just barely beat him out. It's about that time again. Playoffs, Colorado Avalanche, Golden Knights, round number one. That's a very good start. So we're gonna be up by two no matter what here after three. And can we go up three to one or will it be a best of three? Nice. Will the Avalanche live to fight another day? They don't. Wow. Didn't see that coming. Our next victim is the Dallas Stars. Let's sim the first three games and see how they go. Oh no. Oh no. Is it going to be a sweep? Yep, it sure is. Well, you know what though? We made it past the first round, so I'm proud of us. And the Ottawa Senators take home the Stanley Cup. Rust, what a playoff performance from him. 10 points in nine games. Let's have a look at the player stats in the playoffs real quick here. Wow, 10 out of Panarin as well. Nine from Kopitar, nine from Gord. Oh, he got lit up. An 881. What happened, Flower? Samsonov, 16 wins. He had zero shutouts, but he had a 921 save percentage. We got two shutouts from Jesper here. Falk and EK65 led defensemen, but Falk put up 19 points in just 16 games. That is outrageous. We see 15 from Pi Trangelo. Yes, it is in fact Petrangelo. I'm aware. Neil. Bianc! Mika Zabinijad puts up 25 points in 20 playoff games. Blake Wheeler had 24. Same with Hatrick Kane. Where's the Senators at, though? Oh, Lindholm with 22 in 20 games. Probably won the con smite then. They also had Timo, who put up 21 points, and Bergeron. So that's probably their first line right there. Or they could have had Mangiapane in there somewhere as well. Four Senators in a row. So we know the team awards, but what about the individual trophies? Dreisaitl takes home the Art Ross and the Hart. Yossi gets the Norris. Cooch takes home the Lady Bang. Slavkovsky gets the Calder. boy. Lindholm does in fact get the Con Smite. The Vesna goes to Flower. Oh yeah. We don't go home empty handed. And the Jennings. Let's go. What a performance from the kid. Zadorov gets the Masterton. Cook takes the Jack Adams. Barkov with the Selkie. Dreisaitl with the Ted Lindsay. And we already know it. Austin Matthews. Gets the Rocket Richard. Well, there's your playoff tree. That's how everything went down. We did get destroyed in round two, but hey, we made it past round one, so I can't be too upset. That's progression. I also just hit my hand on the desk. Did not feel great. Guys, we're closing in on 50K on the channel, so I thank you so much for that. It really does mean a lot. That would be halfway to one of my main life goals. I really want to get one of those plaques, maybe one day. But yes, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see the inverse of this draft, be sure to let me know. If you have other draft ideas, let me know. I think that I want to challenge you guys as well to take on this draft challenge. And be sure to let me know in the comments how your attempt went. On that note, guys... I'll see you soon.